He lost his cattle. His wealth was wiped out. And his health was destroyed. And the Bible says his entire body, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, was covered in boils. I thought about Job a while back because I had a bull that I had to deal with. Talking about a bull is ugly. You don't want to call it a boil. You want to call it a sore. Why? Because boils are embarrassing. Hmm? I see nurses in here going. But let's call it what it was. I had one boil. Wasn't that big? I can't tell you the pain that that one place on my hide hurt. I, I had to go have it cut out. And I was thinking about that. I was thinking, the Bible says Job was covered from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. The man lost everything and was suffering. So much so that he cried out in Job 27 too, it says, As God lives who has taken away my right and denied me justice and the Almighty who has vexed and embittered my life. Job was hurting. And Job was upset with God. But what Job didn't know was that God had allowed the enemy to come into his life to test him in such a way because God actually thought a lot of him. You're not going to hear this preached much. You see, God was proud of Job. And when Satan started looking for someone to take down, God said, you can't take the man down. Have you heard of my servant Job? And, and as the story goes, the enemy begins to, to barter with the Lord. Let me touch this. Let me touch that. And he'll, he'll turn his back on you. And, and, and even after going through the first things that he went through, he came back and God said, listen, you can touch anything he's got except don't touch his life. Because he's mine. So the devil goes and ruins his health and he's sitting there and cries out to God. I'm vexed, I'm embittered. Where are you, God? And the thing that Job didn't understand was that God has got a plan for his people that is not just earthly, but is heavenly. And the Lord wants to show off the face of his people, the faith of his people into the heavenly realm. So even though Job had a hard time here, and he had a hard time with God, when it all came down, Job ended up blessing the Lord and understanding that there was a greater purpose, even though he did not understand all that was going on behind the scenes. Because, you see, here's what Job had to learn. Job had to learn God's ultimate purpose for his life was to bring him glory, not just on earth, but also in the heavenly realm. Did you know that all of heaven's watching you? Did you know the heavenly host looks down upon us? The Bible says they're there to encourage us. Angels are there to help us get through hard times. You say, Pastor, I don't know about this. Listen, God is a rewarder of those who remain in faith with him. And after Job glorified the Lord by maintaining his faith before the heavenlies, God restored everything he had twofold. You're not as happy about that as you really ought to be. <laughs> I mean, a couple of years of suffering and twice what he would have had if he didn't go through the suffering. Lord, let them get it before they go home. <laughs> There's a story, and it's a true story. The famous Oriental philosopher Lachman, while a slave being presented by his ma was presented by his master with a bitter melon, immediately he ate it all. 
How is it possible, said his master, for you eat so nauseous a fruit? And Lachman replied, I have received so many favors from you. Is it no wonder I should for once in my life eat a bitter melon from your hand? This generous answer of the slave struck the master so forcibly that he immediately gave him his liberty. How good's God been to you? Hmm? Really, how, how good's God been to you? He just sent Jesus to suffer and bleed and die for you. <laughs> he just offered you salvation as, as a free gift. He just gives you every promise in the Word of God and said if you'll hang in there and persevere in faith and believe, you'll receive everything. Now, I know there's some tough things that come along. Job went through some tough stuff. But in the end, when it came to his complaining to God about the tough stuff, he literally says, I cover my mouth. For you are God. And then the goodness of God began to flow to him again. I know you're not going to hear this preached in some places, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Sometimes we're angry at God when we need to be trusting him. I, I may have become bitter because of envy and jealousy of others. James 3.14 3, says, But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast and tell lies against the truth. I was thinking about this. Being jealous of what someone else has is the lowest point of faith and trust in God that we can have. It, it really is. You see, if you believe what someone else has is for you, don't be jealous of them. Learn from them. If, if you believe what someone else has is for you, bless them and learn from them. I'm amazed at the number of people that see something they want and then they want to tear the people down that have it. It, it, It's amazing to me. If you see something in somebody else that you believe the Lord has for you, then go to them and learn how they got it. Don't just be jealous that they have it. In the book of Acts, there was a magi- ma- magician named named Simon. He was so envious of Peter's ability to impart the Spirit of God to others that he tried to buy the ability. You know, remember the story in the book of Acts? It, it's in Acts 8. And, man, it, it must have been cool. It is cool to watch God's ministers... Lay hands on folks, speak the word over people, and the Holy Spirit come on them. And when they're baptized in the Holy Spirit, they'll speak in tongues. When, they, when the anointing's released on them, sometimes they'll go out in the Spirit. They'll be filled with joy. It's pretty cool to watch the Spirit of God work. Simon thought it would be cool if he could do that, and he wanted to know how much it cost. Let me just, let me just tell you something. If you have to ask how much it cost, it's too much for you. And, and this is what Peter said. He said, for I see you are in a state of bitter envy and bound by unrighteousness. And it goes on thinking you can buy the gift of God with money. Let, let me tell you about most folks. Now, unless, you, unless you've won the lottery, most folks work for everything they've got. Hmm? They work for what they got. They, they work for an education. They work, work their way up through being janitor. Working at Mickey D's, Wendy's, Hardee's. And, and they kept working, they kept being faithful until they get, put themselves in, in, in a position that, that they could be blessed and they have what they have. In the ministry, it, it's the same way. Young ministers that have an anointing on them scare me to death. I know I say that a lot because I used to be one. 
And I look back and I scare me to death. Why? Because you can't buy that. And because you have no idea the cost of that to that person. Be careful what you want from somebody else because you don't know what it costs them. Some of the disciples wanted to sit at the right hand and left hand of Jesus. And Jesus said, before you do that, you have to go through the baptism I've been through. Will you do that? Oh, yeah, we'll go through it with you. And they did. Be careful. It's, it's easy to be embittered when you look at what somebody else's somebody else has and wants want what they have when you yourself haven't been through what they've been through to have what they have don't ask me to repeat that just get the just get the just get the tape we become embittered because of envy and jealousy of others we become embittered because of family situations you know i could probably preach a whole series on, on this alone This is what it says in Genesis 26 through 35. It says, And they made life bitter for Isaac and Rebekah. And they made life bitter for Isaac and Rebekah. Who is the they? Esau and the two women he married. Esau didn't keep it within the clan. Esau went out and, and didn't just marry one woman. He went out and married two. And he brought them back home. And Isaac and Sarah, or I'm sorry, Isaac and Rebecca were not happy about it. Have you ever had anybody in your family do anything that you weren't happy about? Have you ever done anything in your family that other people weren't happy about? Listen, I'm going to come down for this one. This one's too important. You, you have to hear this one because there is nothing more important next to Jesus and your church family than your blood family. Those three things are important. All three of them ordained of God. Now, I, I need you to understand that many times because you'll have so many people in your family that aren't believers, many times your church family will become more important than your blood family, but your blood family is still family. Have you ever had anybody in your family do something that hurt you? That irritated you? I'm talking about both families. When you put family, when I'm talking about family now, put church family and blood family. Look at your neighbor and say, stuff's going to happen. Stuff's going to happen. It's going to happen. We live in an imperfect world. It's not, nothing's fair. It's not, nothing's fair. Esau's the firstborn Jacob's the second. God's already prophesied that the, 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 that the younger would rule the older. Nothing had to happen. Nothing had to happen for that to come to fruition. God is God all by himself. And nobody had to do anything other than just let God work. But you see, here's the deal. Rebecca became embittered at the trouble Esau brought into the family. This is strong. This is strong. What I'm about to tell you is, is strong. And we all know the story about Esau and, and, and Jacob and, and, and how Esau sold his birthright off, and we're going to birthright out, and we're going to talk about that next. But what I want you to see now is this, is that Esau came back in and messed everything up. Has anybody done something in your family, your church family or your family, and just messed everything up? Be careful how you handle that. Because you see, what Rebecca did is she decided that she was going to fix Esau. And she became the schemer and the manipulator long before Jacob. And out of the bitterness of her own heart, she swindled her own firstborn's birthright 